Today we're going to be talking about common factoring. Now factoring in general is maybe a word you haven't heard before, but it's basically the opposite of expanding, which means we're going to find an expression as a product of two or more terms or expressions. So remember, product means they are talking about things that are multiplied together. So for example, 3 times 6 is 18. So the factors of 18 are 3 and 6. Because they multiply, They are a, the product is 18. Just like over here, x, 3x, and 2x are all factors of 6x cubed. Because they multiply together to give us 6x cubed. Okay, so that's factoring in general. Now common factoring, what we're going to talk about today, is the most simple form of common factoring. And we need to find the greatest common factor. So this is the largest integer, so a whole number, that divides evenly into each value of a given set of numbers. So we're looking for things that divide evenly. So if we're going to go for like a super straightforward example, um, the greatest common factor of 24 and 36, we need to find out what the factors of 24 are. And if we just go through, well, we know 1 and 24 multiply to give us 24. We got 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. So those are our factors. We get 6, 8. Now 36, the factors of 36, so numbers that multiply together to give us 36. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, 36, right? 1 times 36 is 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, and 6 times 6. So all of those numbers multiply together to give us 36. And we want to look for numbers that are in common. So common numbers, well, obviously 1, 2, 3, 4 are all the same in both sets of numbers. But we're looking for the greatest common number. So the one that we can see in both is the 12. So the greatest common factor of 24 and 36 is 12. And we're going to use this process, but now we are looking at it in a more complicated way because we're looking at coefficients, the numbers, and the variables. So again, we're looking for things that get multiplied together to give us our number. So for example, we have 5xy squared and 20xy. Well, if we look at our coefficients first, 5 and 20, the greatest common factor of those is 5. And then look, we can take out an x and an x from both. So they both contain an x and they both contain a y. This one has 2 and this one has 1. So we can just take out the lowest number. So 5xy is our greatest common factor of these two terms. Now let's go into more detail about how we get this number. In order to actually common factor an expression, we need to first determine the greatest common factor. And this is going to be the first factor in the factored expression. So it's going to be something that gets multiplied by the rest of it. And then we actually divide each term by the greatest common factor. I'm going to write it the long way, just so you can see what's happening. But we don't want you to write this as you are um, answering tests and stuff. You shouldn't have to write this step out. So the first thing is to determine the greatest common factor. Well, we have coefficients of 2 and 6. Well, 2 is the greatest common factor between these. It's as big as, oh, and it does divide into 6. And then we look at and say, do we have variables in both? So I have an x here, but no x there. And I have a y here, but no y in this term. So I can't take out an x or a y, because it's got to divide evenly into each value. So I can't do anything else. So what I do, is I'm going to take my term, and I'm going to divide it by my greatest common factor, and the same for this one. Take my term and divide it by the greatest common factor. And then my final answer, I have to keep this greatest common factor here. It's going to be my first factor in my expression. So 2, and then 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I'm left with just an x. And 6 divided by 2 is 3, so plus 3y. And that is my factored form. Now again, this step is what's happening in your head, but you're not going to write it out. If you're not sure that you did it correctly, you can always check it. And to check, we're going to expand to see if we get back to this expression. So let's just see what this looks like. So I'm going to start with my answer. 2x plus 3y. And again, I need to distribute. 
going to expand 2x plus 2 times 3y, 6y. And yes, I did get back to my first question, so I know that this answer is correct. So you can always check if you have time at the end of a test and you're not sure about a question. Uh, that's the process to just double check. Let's try another one. So here we have 15w plus 25z. So first look at the coefficients. I have 15 and 25. The greatest common factor between these two numbers is 5. And then there's another way to think about it. I can either think about division like this or think about what do I need to multiply here? So I need to multiply these two things together to get this. So 5 times what gives me 15w? Well, 3w times 5 gives me 15w, right? And again, 5 times what gives me 25z? Well, 5 times 5 gives me 25, and I need to have a z there. So I'm done. So 5 is my greatest common factor, and here's what's left over once I kind of take, pull this 5 out of each term. Let's try the next one. So the greatest common factor between 10x squared y minus 5xy squared. Let's look at the coefficients first. 10 and 5, the greatest one is 5. And next I need to look at my variables. So I've got an x in both terms, so I know that I can divide out an x. And the easiest way to do this is just to say, okay, what's the lowest exponent that I have? Remember I've got that invisible one, so that's the lowest exponent which means that I can only divide out 1x from this one. Even though I've got 2 here, I have to go with my lowest number. So I can take out 1x from both. And then I do have a y in both expressions, so I, both terms, pardon me, so I know that I can take out a y. And again, I look for my lowest exponent, 2 in this one and 1 here, so it'll just be 1. So what's left over? So 5xy, what do I need to multiply that by to get 10x squared y? Well. 10 divided by 5 is 2. x squared divided by x is 1. Remember, that's actually subtracting exponents. That's the exponent rule. And then y divided by y is just 1. I don't need to write that down. It doesn't change my term. So negative 5 divided by 5 is going to be negative 1. I will write in the 1 now, but you don't need to. Um, x divided by x is, again, just 1. And then y squared divided by y is left me with a y. So it's going to be 2 minus 1 if I'm subtracting my exponents. So finally, 5xy is my greatest common factor, and I'm left with 2x minus y. Our last more complicated example. I'm going to try my greatest common factor. I have 12, negative 8, and 16. So what is my greatest common factor? Well, 8 goes into 16, but it doesn't go into 12, but 4 goes into all of them. Is there an A in each term? A, A, A. Yes, I know I can take out an A. The question is how many A's can be divided out? Well, I've got 5 in this one, 4 in this one, and 4 in this one. So 4 is the maximum number that I can divide out. B, there's 1 in each term. 3, 3, and 4, so they'll have to go with the lowest. So 3 is what I can take out. Now what's left? 12 divided by 4 is 3. a to the 5 divided by a to the 4. a, b to the 3, b cubed divided by b cubed is just 1. So I don't need to write anything else. Negative 8 divided by 4. Negative 2. a to the 4 divided by b to the 4 is just 1. So I don't need to write anything. b to the 3 divided by b to the 3 is just 1. Again, that's all I need to write. So my final term, 16 divided by 4 is 4. a to the 4 divided by a to the 4 is 1, so I don't need to add anything here. b to the 4 divided by b to the 3 just leave me with b to the 1. So that is my final expression. Now again, if I am not sure, I should just go and quickly do a check. If you have time on a test at the end when you're going through and um, double checking everything, this is a great tool to use once you have extra time.
So I'm just going to expand it. So that means this whole thing needs to multiply into the bracket, gets distributed. So four times three is 12. A to the four times A is A to the five. And I have a B cubed. Four times negative two is negative eight. And then I have my variables from here. And then four times four, 16. A to the four. B to the three times B is B to the four. So there's my check. Let's just double check that I get back to my question. Minus eight, eight to the four, B to the three, 16, eight to the four, B to the four. So I know that I have common factored this properly. Right, that's the basic skill that you're gonna be using today. Um, please, before you come to class tomorrow, make sure that you try these questions, okay? If you can factor them, factor. If you can't factor anything, then just write not factorable underneath it, okay? So these should be in your note for tomorrow. Have a great day.